Hi, this is Doug Schneider. Welcome back to Real Hi-Fi. Today's topic, a product alert. The NAD Masters M23 Amplifier. Roger Cano just reviewed it for SoundstageHiFi.com. You can find the review there and a link to the measurements. And I want to tell you about it so you know about it. But I first want to tell you about this amplifier. It's the Purify Audio Eigentact. An amplifier you can't really buy because it's an engineering sample. But if you don't know about Purify Audio and you're an audiophile, you should. It was founded several years ago by Danish entrepreneur Peter Lingdorf. His goal in creating the company was to increase hi-fi technology, improve it substantially. And to do so, he hired some of the world's best designers, including Bruno Putzies and Lars Risbo, among others. Look those guys' resumes up online. I think you'll be impressed. And he kind of assembled this dream team of designers to create products that don't go in their own end consumer products, but in other companies' products. One of the first products that the team delivered was the 1ET400A amplifier board, still current today, in fact, used inside the M23, so we'll talk about it more. The claim to fame of the 1ET400A, unbelievably low distortion and noise. So not just competitive against other Class D or switching amplifiers, because that's the kind of technology it uses, but against amplifiers of any type as well, Doing so while providing sufficient power output. Coupled with the right power supply, it's rated to deliver more than 200 watts into 8 ohms, 400 watts plus into 4 ohms, and it's 2 ohm stable, so it can drive pretty much any loudspeaker out there. Basically, a reference class amplifier module. But, like I said, Purify doesn't make end products for consumers. They make products to go in other companies' products for consumers, but they needed a way to demonstrate their technology. So they created the Eigentac. What they did was take two of their 1ET400A boards. Those are mono boards. They added a Hypex power supply and their own gain board, because that was required to make it all work, and put it in this inexpensive case, and then sent that out. Those Eigentacs went out to companies all over the world as proof of concept, as well as the companies could then fiddle with them to see what they could make of the technology, and also to reviewers like me, I got this one, to try out. And one thing that really impressed me when I got the sample, before we tested it, was the company's approach. They basically said, do what you want with it. Measure it, listen to it, punish it, go for it. They were supremely confident in what they created. And it didn't take long to see why. This is an amazing little amplifier. Looks aside, it met its power specs. It met its distortion and noise specs. It sounds utterly transparent. It functions perfectly. It is kind of the ultimate audiophile amplifier for someone who wants purely transparent sound. In other words, it does nothing to the signal. And when I was done with it, I asked if I could hold on to it as a reference, and they allowed me to. And I thought to myself also, if some company makes a great consumer version, it's going to be a killer. Enter NAD or NAD, whichever you want to call it. Both names are valid. By the way, NAD is an acronym for New Acoustic Dimension, and the company's history dates back to 1972. Now, this was one of the first companies to embrace Eigentac technology, and why? One is that NAD tends to be a very forward-thinking company and has long embraced switching type Class D amplifier technology. They've got various topologies in their products even before Eigentac came along, but they were happy to get into Eigentac as kind of the next generation of digital type amplifier products. The other reason, and Peter Lingdorf told me this personally, was that Peter Lingdorf was actually involved in NAD years ago. Not anymore, but years ago, 
and he has kind of a soft spot for the NAD name, the whole company, what it stands for, so he was happy that Purify could license Eigentac technology to NAD. And NAD initially put the Eigentac technology in the M33 integrated amplifier, as well as the C298 power amplifier. They also implemented it into the Masters M28 multi-channel amplifier, but that amplifier, while it could be used for stereo, is really aimed at the home theater crowd. And what I want to really focus on here are the stereo component implementations. Now, putting it in the M33 was a good idea for NAD because it was a very successful product for them. It's still current and people love the M33. But when I said it would be a killer product, I was thinking more about a power amplifier. I wanted to see a commercialized version of the Eigentac done really, really well. You could look at the C298 then, which is a pure power amplifier. However, the C298 had a few things about it that precluded it from being the killer I wanted it to be. And these are, in fairness, reflected in the price. It's priced quite a bit less than the M23. Nevertheless, I'll outline them. One, the case. It feels flimsy on the C298. I want an amplifier case to be more substantial. Another thing, they have variable gain, but they used a potentiometer for it, not a switch like on the M23. And I'll get into why I like the switch more. But I want to give you also a little bit of insight and trivia about the Eigentact implementations in NAD amps. A lot of people think they stuff Purify boards inside, Purify made boards, but actually they manufacture the boards themselves using the Eigentact circuit. They say this results in a better amplifier overall, and likewise they design everything else inside the case, the power supply and the gain board. But like I said, they chose to use a potentiometer. Finally, the power output. Of the C298, it's only rated for 185 watts per channel into 8 ohms, and like I said about the engineering sample, it's rated at over 200 watts per channel. So those were the three things that kept it from being a killer. So enter, let me grab it here. The Mighty Masters M23, way more substantially built than the C298 and way, way, way more than the Eigentact engineering sample. So the M23 is what I call the original Eigentact engineering sample promise fulfilled. And why is that? Well, like I said, it's built way better. It also looks really nice. Great styling. And that's a NAD hallmark these days in the Master Series components. And looks count for something in Hi-Fi. Let me just put this back. In terms of its measured performance, it meets or exceeds all of NAD specs, I believe. It punches past its power ratings more than 200 watts into 8 ohms, more than 400 watts into 4 ohms. 2 ohms stable, that's as a stereo amp. It's switchable to mono operation, so you can make it a mono block. This is not switchable. Now, that to me is not a big deal because I think most people will use it as a stereo amp and that's how I would use it. But if you need more power and want to go into mono operation, it's capable of it. And on its backside, there are good quality RCA single-ended inputs, XLR balanced inputs, and speaker binding posts. There's also a switch marked low, mid, and high for adjustable gain. And now you might be wondering why I favor the switch over the potentiometer. Well, the switch, in my opinion and from my experience, has the potential for being more correct. And what I mean by that is this. Potentiometers, although they can go through a continuous range, so you have many more adjustment levels than what a three-position switch provides, they almost always have channel imbalance problems. Old potentiometers in preamps, the left and right channel balance could be off by quite a bit sometimes. And while that doesn't guarantee that a switch will always be right, my belief is the designers have a better chance of getting the left and right 
channels exactly match, particularly through manufacturing, than a potentiometer, which could have an inherent error. So I think that it's a really good, if not great thing, to have the switch instead of the potentiometer. And this might also make you wonder why you even have to change the gain in the first place. It's a good question. Well, it has to do with this. You can better optimize the output of the preamp. Its gain level is set at a certain number, and that'll vary by preamp, with the amplifier's gain level. So you can get a better overall performance through a lowering of noise if you optimize those gain levels. And in this case, this amplifier allows you to adjust its gain, and not all amplifiers allow that. And I think also that is a great thing. And all told, it's a great amplifier too. And I mean truly great. I don't know if NAD could have done any better. And what I mean by that is, I don't know if they could have made a better amp with the EigenTac technology. It's got great build, great styling, great performance, all the features, and at a really fantastic price. Right now it sells for $3,750 in the United States. It's a steal. It's what I would buy. It's that good of an amplifier. Now, I don't want to say much more. Go check out Roger's review and check out the measurements. If this interests you and I turned you on to this amplifier, that's great. That was the intention. Thank you for watching.